Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Our focus this week has been on spiritual blindness, how God wants to open our eyes to see what is always that has always been there, but we're blind to. What good is it, is it for you to ask God to bless you and God sends the blessing, but you too blind to see it? Or that you have maybe a, a, a good person in your life, a good husband, a good wife, or good parents, and you're just too blind to see it until they're gone. So God wants to open our eyes to see what has perhaps always been there, spiritual insight, spiritual illumination, to see what's always there, been there, but we've been blind to. So we've been looking at this all week, the eyes of faith, how to overcome spiritual blindness. Today, I want to talk to you about a blindness that I see many Christians having, and that's what I call the blindness of one-dimensional Christianity. One-dimensional Christianity. Let me tell you something about the Christian faith. The Christian faith is both spiritual worship and it's social action. We want to make it either or. We either want to focus on spiritual worship, going to church and praising God, or we want to say, forget the spiritual worship, let's engage in social action in which we're out in the world during the week helping each someone who is in need. Voter registration campaigns, uh, marching against police brutality, social action. But Christianity is not one dimensional. It's not either or, it's both and. It's both spiritual worship that always leads to social action. It is lifting your hands to God in worship but those same hands that you lift up in worship on Sunday or whenever you is your day of worship, whenever you lift up hands, those same hands that are lifted up to God in worship should be hands that are that are reaching out to others who are in need. And we can see this happening uh, in this story we're going to read in Mark chapter nine. And let me tell you what you should look for. I want you to look at the response of three groups of people. The first group is the first three disciples who are on the mountain with Jesus. And then the second group is the nine disciples who are in the valley of suffering, uh, trying to do social action. And then the third model is Jesus, Jesus. So let's look at it. Mark chapter nine, verse two reads, six days later, Three of them did see it. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain. So Peter, James, and John are up on the mountain. His appearance changed from the inside out right before their eyes. It's called the transfiguration. The outside of Jesus went inside. The inside of Jesus came out. In other words, the essence of who Jesus was, they saw him. Because normally Jesus was very unimpressive. Impressive. He was a peasant. But they really got at once to see who Jesus was, God incarnate. His clothes shimmered, glistening white, whiter than any bleach could make them. Elijah, along with Moses, came in view. And these are men who have been died, dead for centuries. But they have shown up, Elijah, to talk with Jesus. Elijah and Moses, Elijah the prophet and Moses the lawgiver, came into view in deep conversation with Jesus. Peter interrupted, Rabbi, this is a great moment. Let's build three memorials, one for you, one for Moses, stop here, and one for Elijah. So when Peter wants to put Jesus on the same level as Moses and Elijah, but notice he said, let's build three memorials. Let's build three churches. First Baptist Moses, First Baptist Elijah, and First Baptist Jesus. What Peter is really saying is this, I want to stay on this mountain in spiritual worship and praise God. Verse six, he blurted this without thinking, stunned as they all were about what they were seeing. Just then a light radiant cloud enveloped them and from deep in the cloud of voice, this is my beloved son marked by my love. Listen to him, my God. The next minute, the disciples were looking around, rubbing their eyes, seeing nothing. 
but Jesus only. So let's let's kind of figure out what's going on here. What's happening is they're up on the mountain. Jesus is changed. The outside of Jesus goes in. The inside of Jesus goes out. Elijah and Moses appear talking to Jesus from the past. It is though all of Jewish history has risen up to affirm who Jesus was. And Peter says, let's build some three three memorials to Elijah, Moses, and to Jesus, and let's just stay up on this mountain. So Peter represents one dimension of the Christianity, and those are the people who just love to worship and hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus, and praise God all day and stay in church all day, and that's it. Now, that's not to minimize the importance of worship. Worship is very important. Now, worship is, to the Christian, what charging a battery is to a car. When a car needs a jump, it's a good car, but the battery needs to be jumped. So you hook the battery up to a charger so that the battery can be charged. Well, that's what we need. We lose our energy. We lose our enthusiasm. We become pessimistic and defeated. So we come to worship. We get a vision of God and we get charged up when we are reminded of the greatness of our God. And that is critically important. That is a very important dimension of the Christian faith. But if all you do is worship, that's it. Then you have a one dimensional Christianity. Um, let, me, let me explain what I mean. There was once a man who came to church late and he, he meant to get there early, but he was late. And he asked the usher standing at the door, is service still going on? And the usher astutely responded by saying, well, worship, the worship part is over, but the service is really beginning. And that's true because once worship is over, that's when Christian service should begin. So just to have worship only without service is one dimensional. Now let's look at those who believe in service only and don't believe in worship. Because notice why Peter, James, and John were up in worship that the other nine disciples were down in the valley doing social action. We are told in verse 14, for it says, when they came back down the mountain, the other disciples, so they were not in worship. They were too busy marching and protesting, which they should be doing. That's important. They should be protesting police brutality and injustice economic injustice. It says, when they came back down the mountain to the other disciples, uh, they saw a huge crowd around them and the religion scholars cross-examining them. As soon as the people in the crowd saw Jesus, admiring, admiring excitement stirred them. They ran and greeted him. He asked, what's going on? What's all the commotion? And verse 17 says, a man out of the crowd answered, teacher, I brought my mute son made speechless by a demon to you. So really, they thought Jesus was with those other nine disciples, but Jesus was up on the mountain worshiping. And these other nine disciples who were not on the mountain worshiping, but in the valley doing social action, failed to help this man whose son had a demon. Because while they were engaging in social action, which is important, they had not engaged in worship. They were trying to empower somebody to help somebody when they themselves had not been empowered by God through worship. So this is the other extreme of one dimensional Christianity. One extreme is let's stay up on the mountain. Let's just worship. Let's just shout. Let's just praise God. But that's not doing anything else. The opposite extreme are those who are out in the valley in the marketplace and they are trying to do social action work, but they don't have time to pray. They don't have time to read their Bible. They don't have time to study. They don't have to worship, time to worship God. And they don't have the power and the strength. That's one dimensional Christianity. And what we must avoid is both extremes. Those who stay only uh, in the holy place and those who stay the other extreme only in the marketplace. Both extremes, excluding the other, is unhealthy Christianity. So you see the first three disciples, Peter says, let's stay on the mountain and worship. You see the nine who are in the valley 
let's stay in the valley and do social action, forget worship. But then you see Jesus, who is successful in healing the, the son who had the mute spirit. He did both. Jesus was up on the mountain worshiping. And then we are told, go down to verse 14. Go to verse 14. It says in verse 14 uh, that when they came back down the mountain to the other disciples. So Jesus, who was up on the mountain and told the disciples who wanted to stay on the mountain and build some churches up on the mountain, First Baptist Elijah, First Baptist Moses, First Baptist Jesus. But Jesus, let's go back down the valley. We see the same Jesus who was on the mountain, who has come down to the valley in trouble, to the trouble that's in the valley, but he comes down empowered because he had been worshiping up on the mountain. In other words, you have the three disciples who say, I'm only concerned about the worship dimension. And you have nine disciples who say, I'm only concerned about the social action, the social action dimension. But you have Jesus who has combined both spiritual worship and social action. He reached up his hands to God on the mountain in worship, talking to Elijah and Moses, hearing God affirm him, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. He, he was connected to God, hands lifted up in worship. He comes back down the mountain and he has hands extended out in social action. And that is healthy Christianity. And I pray that we can avoid the blindness of one dimensional Christianity that says I worship and that's it, or I do social action and that it's it. Just like a bird has two wings to fly, the Christian faith flies when we reach up hands to God in worship and reach out hands to others through social action. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Help us to have a holistic faith that blends together uh, spiritual worship on the mountain and social action in the valley. Never let us forget that the inspiration uh, that we get up on the mountain is so that we can have some perspiration in helping others that is in the valley. Help us to have balance in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me again for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us here at St. Stephen Church, New Start at SSCLive.org. That's New Start at SSCLive.org. God bless you real good. Don't forget, we're still in the midst of COVID-19. So don't forget that during this season of COVID-19 to stay safe, Stay sane and never forget that God is in control. Peace and blessings. I'll see you tomorrow.